Semi-trailer truck A semi-trailer truck is a large vehicle that consists of a towing engine, known as a tractor in the United States and truck in many other places, attached to one or more semi-trailers to carry freight. It is also known as a transport in Canada. Prime mover in Australia. Semi, tractor trailer, big rig, or 18-wheeler in the United States. An articulated lorry, abbreviated Arctic, in Britain and Ireland. A semi-trailer does not trail completely behind the towing vehicle, but is attached at a point that is just forward of the rearmost axle of the towing unit. This is done so that a large portion of the weight of the trailer is carried by the prime mover. This arrangement means that both tractor and semi-trailer will have a distinctly different design than a rigid truck and trailer. Regional configurations North America In North America, the combination vehicles made up of a powered truck and one or more detachable trailers, are known as semi-tractor trailers, tractor trailers, semis, big rigs, semi-truck, or 18-wheelers. Trucks The tractors, or powered trucks, have two or three axles. Those built for hauling heavy-duty commercial construction machinery may have as many as four or five axles, some often being lift axles. The most common tractor cab layout has a Ford engine, one steering axle, and two drive axles. The fifth-wheel trailer coupling on most tractor trucks is movable fore and aft, to allow adjustment in the weight distribution over its rear axle, S. Ubiquitous in Europe but less common in North America since the 1990s, is the Kabova configuration, where the driver sits next to, or over the engine. With changes in the U.S. to the maximum length of the combined vehicle, the Kabova was mostly phased out of North American over-the-road, or long-haul service by 2007. Kabovas were notorious for being difficult to service, as the cab could not be lifted on its hinges to a full 90-degree forward tilt and this severely limited access to the front part of the engine. Trucks average between 4 and 8 miles per gallon, with fuel economy standards requiring more than 7 miles per gallon efficiency by 2014. Trailers The cargo trailer usually has a tandem axle pair at the rear, each of which has dual wheels, or eight wheels on the trailer, four per axle. Many trailers are equipped with a movable tandem to allow adjusting the weight distribution. The combination of 8 tires on the trailer and 10 tires on the tractor is what led to the moniker 18-wheeler. The United States also allows two axle tractors to pull two single axle 28.5 feet m, semi-trailers, known officially as STAA doubles, and colloquially as doubles, a set, or a set of joints on all highways that are part of the national network. To connect the second of a set of doubles to the first trailer, and to support the front half of the second trailer, a converter gear, also known as a com gear or dolly is used. This apparatus has one or two axles, a fifth wheel coupling for the rear trailer, and a tongue with a ring hitch coupling for the forward trailer. Individual states may further allow longer vehicles, known as longer combination vehicles, or LCVs and may allow them to operate on roads other than those that are part of the national network. LCV types include triples, 328.5 feet, 8.7 m, trailers. Maximum weight up to 129,000 pounds, 59,000 kilograms, turnpike doubles, 248 feet, 14.6 m, trailers. Maximum weight up to 147,000 pounds, 67,000 kilograms, Rocky Mountain doubles, 140 to 53 feet, 12.2 to 16.2 m, trailer, though usually no more than 48 feet per 14.6 m, and 128.5 feet, 8.7 m, trailer, known as a pup. Maximum weight up to 129,000 pounds, 59,000 kilograms, in Canada, a turnpike double is due 53 feet, 16.2 m, trailers, and a Rocky Mountain double is a 50 feet, 15.2 m, trailer with a 24 feet, 7.3 m, pup. Future LCVs under consideration and study for the USMAP-21 transportation bill are container doubles.
These combinations are under study for potential recommendation in November 2014. 40 feet, 12 m, trailer turnpike doubles, 148,000 pounds, 67,000 kilograms, GVWR, 40 20 feet, 12 6 m, trailer Rocky Mountain doubles, 134,000 pounds, 61,000 kilograms, GVWR, double 20 feet, 6.1 m, trailer doubles, 120,000 pounds, 54,000 kilograms, GVWR. Regulations on LCVs vary widely from one state or province to another. None allows more than three trailers without a special permit. Reasons for limiting the legal trailer configurations include both safety concerns and the impracticality of designing and constructing roads that can accommodate the larger wheelbase of these vehicles and the larger minimum turning radii associated with them. Most states restrict operation of larger tandem trailer setups such as triple units, turnpike doubles, and Rocky Mountain doubles. In general, these configurations are restricted to turnpikes. Except for these units, tandem setups are not restricted to certain roads any more than a single setup. They are also not restricted by weather conditions or difficulty of operation. The Canadian province of Ontario, however, does have weather-related operating restrictions for larger tandem trailer setups. In the United States, 80,000 pounds, 36,000 kilograms, is the maximum allowable legal gross vehicle weight without a permit. The axle weight breakdown is 20,000 pounds, 9,072 kilograms, maximum on a single axle, 34,000 pounds, 15,422 kilograms, maximum on the tandem axles. Over length and overweight permits are issued by each individual state whose roads will be traveled. The permits are usually issued in advance, for a specific period of time, over a specific route, with a specific load. Most over-length loads require escorts. An escort is an accompanying automobile and its driver, who communicates with the driver of the payload vehicle regarding the position of the load in relation to the road and shoulder, and about other situational considerations. A trailer's dimensions can vary greatly, depending on the amount and type of cargo it is designed to haul. In the United States, they are normally limited to 8.5 feet, 2.6 m in width. See types of trailers under construction, below. Although dual wheels are the most common, use of two single, wider tires, known as super singles, on each axle is becoming popular among bulk cargo carriers and other weight-sensitive operators. With increased efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the use of the super single tire is gaining popularity. There are several advantages to this configuration. The first of these is that super singles reduce fuel consumption. In 1999, tests on an oval track showed a 10% fuel savings when super singles were used. These savings are realized because less energy is wasted flexing fewer tire side walls. Second, the lighter overall tire weight allows a truck to be loaded with more freight. The third advantage is that the single wheel covers less of the brake unit which allows faster cooling and reduces brake fade. One of the major disadvantages of the super singles is that they are currently not as widely available as a standard tire. In addition, if a tire should become deflated or be destroyed, there isn't another tire attached to the same hub to maintain the dynamic stability of the vehicle, as would be the case with dual wheels. With dual wheels, the remaining tire may be overloaded, but it will typically allow the vehicle to be safely stopped or driven to a repair facility. Another innovation rapidly growing in popularity is the skirted trailer. The area between the road and the bottom of the trailer frame was left open until it was discovered that the air moving under the trailer is a source of aerodynamic drag. Three split skirt SS, concepts were EPA verified to provide fuel savings greater than 5% and four split skirts concepts had EPA verified fuel savings between 4 and 5 percent. The drawback to skirts is that they make the trailers more vulnerable to high crosswind loading and therefore more susceptible to doglegging, which is the misalignment of truck and trailer, or rolling over in a crosswind situation. Another drawback is that skirted trailers require more steps to remove wheels after a blowout.
Europe. The noticeable difference between tractor units in the North American and Europe is that almost all European models are cab over engine, COE or Ford control, while the majority of North American trucks are conventional, or normal control. For repairs, the entire cab hinges forward to allow maintenance access. European trucks, whether small rigid or fully articulated, have a sheer face on the front. This allows for shorter trucks with longer trailers, with larger freight capacity, within the legal maximum total length. Furthermore, it offers greater maneuverability and better overview for the driver. Conversely, conventional cab tractors offer the driver a more comfortable driving environment and better protection in a collision as well as eliminating the need to empty the driver's personal effects from the tractor whenever the engine requires service. In Europe usually only the rear tractor axle has twin wheels, while larger size single wheels are used for the cargo trailer. The most common combination used in Europe is a semi-tractor with two axles and a cargo trailer with three axles, giving five axles and twelve wheels in total. Lesser used, common in Scandinavia, are tractors with three axles, which feature twin wheels either on one or both rear axles. In addition to the most common three axles variant, cargo trailers with only two or only one axle are in use, again usually with larger single wheels. In Sweden lumber trucks and long distance freight is run on seven or eight axle combinations up to 60,000 kg in weight and 25, 25 meters long. Semi-trailers are used for short distance freight. In Finland since October 1, 2013 new law in 407-2013 allows 76 tons max if the truck has 9 axles and 68 tons max if the truck has 8 axles. Truck can be 25, 25 meters long and 4, 4 meters high in both cases, full law text in Finnish language, explanation by Finnish Forest Association in English, 76 tons in the newspaper. The forest sector plans to submit to the Finnish Transport Safety Agency an application for testing lorries weighing 90 tons and 30 meters long on Finnish roads. United Kingdom In the UK the maximum permitted gross weight of a semi-trailer truck, without the use of a special type general order, STGO, is 44,000 kilograms, 97,000 pounds, which is the second heaviest permitted legal weight for a single semi-trailer truck in the world, 50,000 kg is allowed in the Netherlands. In order for a 44-ton semi-trailer truck to be permitted on UK roads the tractor and semi-trailer must have three or more axles each. Lower weight semi-trailer trucks can mean some tractors and trailer having fewer axles. In practice, like double-decker buses and coaches in the UK, there is no legal height limit for semi-trailer trucks. However, bridges over 16.5 feet 5 .03 m, do not have the height marked on them. Semi-trailer trucks on continental Europe have a height limit of 4.0 meters. Vehicles heavier than 44,000 kilograms 97,000 pounds are permitted on UK roads but are indivisible loads, which would be classed as abnormal or oversize. Such vehicles are required to display an STGO, Special Types General Order, plate on the front of the tractor unit and, under certain circumstances, are required to travel by an authorized route and have an escort. Most UK trailers are 45 feet, 13.7 meters, long and, dependent on the position of the fifth wheel and kingpin, a coupled tractor unit and trailer will have a combined length of between 50 and 55 feet. 15.25 and 16.75 meters. Although the construction and use regulations allow a maximum rigid length of 60 feet, 18.2 meters, this, combined with a shallow kingpin and fifth wheel set close to the rear of the tractor unit, can give an overall length of around 75 feet, 22.75 meters, although combinations of this length are usually used only to carry steel or concrete beams. Providing certain requirements are fulfilled, a special types general order, STGO, allows for vehicles of any size or weight to travel on UK roads. However, in practice any such vehicle has to travel by a route authorized by the Department of Transport and move under escort. The escort of abnormal loads in the UK is now predominantly carried out by private companies, 
but extremely large or heavy loads that require road closures must still be escorted by the police. In the UK, some articulated trucks have eight tyres on three axles on the tractor. These are known as six-wheelers or six-leggers, with either the centre or rear axle having single wheels which normally steer as well as the front axle and can be raised when not needed, that is when unloaded or only a light load is being carried. An arrangement known as a TAG axle when it is the rear axle, or mid-lift when it is the centre axle. Some trailers have two axles which have twin wheels on each axle. Other trailers have three axles, of which one axle can be a lift axle which is super single wheels. In the UK, two wheels bolted to the same hub are classed as a single wheel, therefore a standard six-axle articulated truck is considered to have 12 wheels, even though it is 20 tyres. The UK also allows articulated truck tractors which have six tyres on two axles. These are known as four-wheelers. Denby Ecolink B Train in 2009 the operator Denby Transport designed and built a 25.25-metre long B-train, or B-double, semi-trailer truck called the Denby Ecolink to show the benefits of such a vehicle, which were a reduction in road accidents and result in less road deaths, a reduction in emissions due to the one tractor unit still being used and no further highway investment being required. Furthermore Denby Transport asserted that two Ecolinks would replace three standard articulated lorries while if limited to the current UK weight limit of 44 tonnes, it was claimed the Ecolink would reduce carbon emissions by 16%, and could still halve the number of trips needed for the same amount of cargo carried in conventional lorries. This is based on the fact that for light but bulky goods such as toilet paper, plastic bottles, cereals and aluminium cans, Conventional lorries run out of cargo space before they reach the weight limit. At 44 tons, as opposed to 60 tons usually associated with B trains, the Ecolink also exerts less weight per axle on the road compared to the standard 6 axle 44 ton articulated combination. The vehicle was built after Denby Transport believed they had found a legal loophole in the present UK law to allow the Ecolink to be used on the public roads. The relevant legislation concerned the 1986 Road Vehicles Construction and Use Regulations. The 1986 regulations state that certain vehicles may be permitted to draw more than one trailer and can be up to 25.9 m, 85 feet, in length. The point of law reportedly hinged on the definition of a towing implement, with Denby prepared to argue that the second trailer on the Ecolink was one. The Department for Transport were of the opinion that this refers to recovering a vehicle after an accident or breakdown, but the regulation does not explicitly state this. During BTAC performance testing the Ecolink was given an excellent rating for its performance in maneuverability, productivity, safety and emissions tests, superseding ordinary lorries in many respects. Private trials had also reportedly shown the Denby vehicle had a 20% shorter stopping distance than conventional lorries of the same weight, due to having extra axles. The active steer system meant that the Ecolink had a turning circle of just 41 feet, the same as a conventional articulated lorry. Although the DFT advised that the Ecolink was not permissible on public roads, Denby Transport gave the police prior warning of the timing and route of the test drive on the public highway, as well as outlining their position in writing to the Eastern Traffic Area Office. On December 1, 2009 Denby Transport were preparing to drive the Ecolink on public roads, but this was cut short because the police pulled the lorry over as it left the gates in order to test it for its legality to investigate any offences which may be found. The police say the vehicle was unlawful due to its length and Denby Transport was served with a notice by the Vehicle and Operator Services Agency, VOSA, inspector to remove the vehicle from the road for inspection. Having returned to the yard, Denby Transport was formally notified by police and VOSA that the lorry could not be used while the Ecolink, or any other B train, have since not been permitted on UK roads. However, this prompted the Department for Transport to undertake a desk study into semi-trailer trucks, which has resulted in the longest semi-trailer trial which commenced in 2012. Longer semi-trailers 
Starting in January 2012 the Department for Transport is conducting a trial of longer semi-trailers. The trial involves 900 semi-trailers of 14.6 meters in length, that is 1 meter longer than the current maximum, and a further 900 semi-trailers of 15.65 meters in length, that is 2.05 meters longer. This will result in the total maximum length of the semi-trailer truck being 17.5 meters, for trailers of 14.6 meter in length, and 18.55 meters, for trailers of 15.65 meters in length. The increase in length will not result in the 44,000 kilograms, 97,000 pounds, weight limit being exceeded and will allow some operators to approach the weight limit which may not have been previously possible due to the previous length of trailers. The trial will run for a maximum of 10 years. Continental Europe the maximum overall length applying in the EU and EEA member states is 18.75 meters with a maximum weight of 40 tons, or 44 tons if carrying an ISO container. However, rules limiting the semi-trailers to 16.5 meters and 18.75 are met with trucks carrying a standardized 7.82 meter body with one additional 7.82 meter body on tow as a trailer. Since 1996, when Sweden and Finland formally won a final exemption from the European Economic Area rules with 60 ton and 25.25 meter combinations, all other member states gained the ability to adopt the same rules. In Italy the maximum permitted weight, unless exceptional transport is authorized, is 44,000 kg for any kind of combination with five axles or more. Effort to increase the maximum overall length the 25.25 meters truck combinations were developed under the branding of ECO Combi which influenced the name of Euro Combi for an ongoing standardization effort where such truck combinations shall be legal to operate in all jurisdictions of the European Economic Area. With the 50% increase in cargo weight, the fuel efficiency increases with an average of 20% with a corresponding relative decrease in carbon emissions and with the added benefit of one-third fewer trucks on the road. The 1996 EU regulation defines a Europe module system, EMS, as it was implemented in Sweden. The wording of EMS combinations and Euro Combi are now used interchangeably to point to truck combinations as specified in the EU document. However apart from Sweden and Finland the Euro Combi is only allowed to operate on specific tracks in other EU member states. From 2006, 25.25M truck trailer combinations are to be allowed on restricted routes within Germany, following a similar, ongoing, trial in the Netherlands. Similarly, Denmark have allowed 25.25 meter combinations on select routes. Like in Sweden and Finland, these vehicles in continental Europe will run a 60 ton weight limit. Two types are to be used one, a 26 ton truck pulling a dolly and semi trailer, or two, an articulated tractor unit pulling a B double. The UK government has so far decided not to have its own trial of these 60 ton vehicles, but to keep an eye on the other countries' trials. When using a dolly, which generally has to be equipped with lights and a license plate, rigid trucks can be used to pull semi trailers. The dolly is equipped with a fifth wheel to which the trailer is coupled. Because the dolly attaches to a pintle hitch on the truck, Maneuvering a trailer hooked to a dolly is different from maneuvering a fifth wheel trailer. Backing the vehicle requires same technique as backing an ordinary truck full trailer combination, though the dolly semi setup is probably longer, thus requiring more space for maneuvering. The tractor semi trailer configuration is rarely used on timber trucks, since these will use the two big advantages of having the weight of the load on the drive wheels and the loader crane used to lift the logs from the ground can be mounted on the rear of the truck behind the load, allowing a short, lightweight, crane to reach both ends of the vehicle without uncoupling. Also construction trucks are more often seen in a rigid plus axle trailer configuration instead of the tractor plus semi-trailer setup. Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden and Finland Denmark the Netherlands and Norway all allowed 25.25M trucks, the Netherlands from 2000, Denmark from 2008, and Norway from 2008 on selected routes. 
In Sweden the allowed length is 24 meters, 78.7 feet, since 1967. Before that, the maximum length was unlimited, the only limitations were on axle load. What stopped Sweden from adopting the same rules as the rest of Europe, when securing road safety was the national importance of a competitive forestry industry. Finland with the same road safety issues and equally important forestry industry followed suit. The change made trucks able to carry three stacks of cut-to-length logs instead of two, as it would be in a short combination. They have one on stack together with a crane on the 6x4 truck, and two additional stacks on a four-axle trailer. The allowed gross weight in both countries is up to 60 tons, 130,000 pounds, depending on the distance between the first and last axle. In the negotiations starting in the late 80s preceding the two countries' entries to the European Economic Area and later the European Union, they insisted on exemptions from the EU rules citing environmental concerns and the transportation needs of the logging industry. In 1995, after Sweden and Finland's entry to the Union, the rules changed again, this time to allow trucks carrying a standard CEN unit of 7.82 meters to draw a 13.6 meters standard semi-trailer on a dolly, a total overall length of 25.25 meters, 82.8 feet. Later B double combinations came into use, often with one 20 feet container on the B link and a 40 feet container, or two 20 feet containers, on a semi trailer bed. In allowing the longer truck combinations, what would take two 16.5 meter semi trailer trucks and one 18.75 meter truck and trailer to haul on the continent now could be handled by just two 25.25 meter trucks, greatly reducing overall costs and emissions. Prepared since late 2012 and effective on January 2013, Finland has changed its regulations to allow total maximum legal weight of a combination to be 76 tons, 168,000 pounds. At the same time the maximum allowed height would be increased by 20 centimeters. From current maximum of 4.2 meters to 4.4 meters. The effect this major maximum weight increase would cause to the roads and bridges in Finland on the long run, is heated debate. However, longer and heavier combinations are regularly seen on public roads, special permits are issued for special cargo, not a too uncommon occurrence. Others are, the mining company Belyden AB have a standing special permit for 80-ton combinations on select routes between mines in the inland and the processing plant in Belyden, taking a load of 50-ton ore. Volvo has a special permit for a 32 meters. 105 feet, steering B trailer trailer combination carrying two 40 feet containers to and from Gothenburg's harbour and Volvo Trucks factory, all on the island of Hisingen. Another example is the ongoing project Entravetil, lit. One more pile stack, started in December 2008. It will allow even longer vehicles to further rationalize the logging transports. As the name of the project points out, it will be able to carry four stacks of timber, instead of the usual three. The test is limited to Narabotten County and the European Route E4 between the timber terminal in Overklicks and the sawmill in Munksand, outside Pitya. The vehicle is a 30-meter long truck trailer combination with a gross weight exceeding 90 tons, 200,000 pounds. It is estimated that this will give a 20% lower cost and 20 to 25% CO2 emissions reduction compared to if the timber instead would have been transported with regular 60-ton truck combinations. As the combination spreads its weight over more axles, braking distance, road wear and traffic safety is believed to be either the same or improved with the 90-ton truck trailer. In the same program two types of 74 tons, 163,000 pounds, Combinations will be tested in Dolsland and Bohuslän counties in western Sweden. An enhanced truck and trailer combination for use in the forest and AB double for plain highway transportation to the mill in Skoghall. The Northland Mining has in 2012 got permission for 90 ton combinations with normal axle load, an extra dolly, 150 km Kornisvaris Vapavara, carrying iron ore. Australia Australian road transport has a reputation for using very large trucks and road trains. 
This is reflected in the most popular configurations of trucks generally having dual drive axles and three axles on the trailers, with four tires on each axle. This means that Australian single semi-trailer trucks will usually have 22 wheels which is generally more than their counterparts in other countries. Long-haul transport usually operates as B-doubles with two trailers, each with three axles, for a total of nine axles, including steering. In some lighter duty applications only one of the rear axles of the truck is driven, and the trailer may have only two axles. From July 2007 the Australian federal and state governments allowed the introduction of B-triple trucks on a specified network of roads. B-triples are set up differently to conventional road trains. The front of their first trailer is supported by the turntable on the prime mover. The second and third trailers are supported by turntables on the trailers in front of them. As a result, B-triples are much more stable than road trains and handle exceptionally well. True road trains only operate in remote areas, regulated by each state or territory government. In total, the maximum length that any articulated vehicle may be, without a special permit and escort, is 53.5 meters, 175.5 feet. Its maximum load may be up to 164 tons, 361,558 pounds, gross and may have up to four trailers. However, heavy restrictions apply to the areas where such a vehicle may travel in most states. In remote areas such as the Northern Territory great care must be taken when sharing the road with longer articulated vehicles that often travel during the daytime, especially four-trailer road trains. Articulated trucks towing a single trailer or two trailers, commonly known as short doubles with maximum overall length of 19 meters, 62 feet, are referred to as general access heavy vehicles, and are permitted in all areas, including metropolitan. B-doubles are limited to a maximum total weight of 62.5 ton, 137,788 pounds, and overall length of 25 meters, 82 feet, or 26 meters, 85 feet, if they are fitted with approved FUPS, Fund Under Run Protection System, devices. B-doubles may only operate on designated roads, which includes most highways and some major metropolitan roads. B-doubles are very common in all parts of Australia including state capitals and on major routes they outnumber single trailer configurations. Maximum width of any vehicle is 2.5 metres, 8 feet 2 in, and height of 4.3 metres, 14 feet 1 in. In the past few years, Allowance has been made by several states to allow certain designs of heavy vehicles up to 4.6 meters, 15 feet 1 in, high but they are also restricted to designated routes. In effect, a 4.6 meters high B-double will have to follow two sets of rules, they may access only those roads that are permitted for B-doubles and for 4.6 meters high vehicles. In Australia, both conventional tractor units and cabovers are common, However cabovers are most often seen on B-doubles on the eastern seaboard where the reduction in total length allows the vehicle to pull longer trailers and thus more cargo than it would otherwise. Super single tires are sometimes used on triaxle trailers. The suspension is designed with travel limiting, which will hold the rim off the road for one blown or deflated tire for each side of the trailer, so a trailer can be driven at reduced speed to a safe place for repair. Super singles are also often used on the steer axle in Australia to allow greater loading over the steer axle. The increase in loading of steer tires requires a permit. Semi truck manufacturers These are for tractor units, not straight, rigid, box or other heavy vehicles. High No Motors, Nissan Diesel, Mitsubishi Fuso Truck and Bus Corporation, Isuzu, Sinatruk. FAW, China, Photon, China, Tata Motors, Alkawari Industries, Bahrain, Ashok Leyland, India, Parat Benz, India, BMC, Turkey, Volkswagen Trucks and Buses, Latin America, South Africa, Volvo Trucks. Construction Types of trailers There are many types of semi-trailers in use designed to haul a wide range of products. See semi-trailer for more detail. Box truck, also known as 
dry van, bus, refrigerator truck, also known as reefer, tanker, dry bulk, flatbed truck, lowboy, car hauler. Coupling and uncoupling The cargo trailer is, by means of a king pin, hooked to a horseshoe-shaped quick-release coupling device called a fifth wheel or a turntable hitch at the rear of the towing engine that allows easy hookup and release. The truck trailer cannot move by itself because it only has wheels at the rear end, it requires a forward axle, provided by the towing engine, to carry half the load weight. The vehicle has a tendency to fold at the pivot point between the towing vehicle and the trailer when braking hard at high speeds. Such a truck accident is called a trailer swing, although it is commonly described as a jackknife. Jackknifing is a condition where the tractive unit swings round against the trailer, not vice versa. C. Jackknifing Braking Semi-trucks use air pressure, rather than hydraulic fluid, to actuate the brakes mainly due to the much larger braking forces required. This also allows for ease of coupling and uncoupling of trailers from the tractor unit, as well as reducing the potential for problems common to hydraulic systems, such as leakage or brake failure caused when overheated brake fluid vaporizes in the hydraulic lines. The most common failure is brake fade, usually caused when the drums or discs in the linings of the brakes overheat from excessive use. The parking brake of the tractor unit and the emergency brakes of the trailer are spring brakes that require air pressure in order to be released. They are applied when air pressure is released from the system, and disengaged when air pressure is supplied. This is an emergency feature which ensures that if air pressure to either unit is lost, the trailer will stop to a grinding halt instead of not stopping and becoming uncontrollable. The trailer controls are coupled to the tractor through two glad hand connectors, which provide air pressure, and an electrical cable, which provides power to the lights and any specialized features of the trailer. Glad hand connectors, also known as palm couplings, are air hose connectors, each of which has a flat engaging face and retaining tabs. The faces are placed together, and the units are rotated so that the tabs engage each other to hold the connectors together. This arrangement provides a secure connection, but allows the couplers to break away without damaging the equipment if they are pulled, as may happen when the tractor and trailer are separated without first uncoupling the airlines. These connectors are similar in design to the ones used for a similar purpose between railroad cars. Two airlines control the trailer unit. An emergency or main air supply line pressurizes the trailer's air tank and disengages the emergency brake, and a second service line controls the brake application. In the UK male female quick release connectors red line, or emergency, have a female on the truck and male on the trailer and a yellow line, or service has a male on the truck and female on the trailer. This avoids coupling errors, causing no breaks, plus the connections will not come apart if pulled by accident. The three electrical lines will fit one way round a primary black a secondary green and an ABS lead, all of these lines are collectively known as Susie's, or Susie coils. Another braking feature of semi-trucks is the engine braking, which could be either compression brake, usually shortened to jake brake or exhaust brake or combination of both. The use of compression brake alone however produces a loud and distinctive noise, and owing to noise pollution, some local municipalities have prohibited or restricted the use of engine brake systems inside their jurisdictions, particularly in residential areas. The advantage to using this instead of conventional brakes is that a truck can travel down a long grade without overheating its wheel brakes. Some vehicles can also be equipped with hydraulic or electric retarders which have an advantage of near silent operation. Transmission Because of the wide variety of loads the semi may carry, they usually have a manual transmission to allow the driver to have as much control as possible. However, all truck manufacturers now offer semi-automatic transmissions, manual gearboxes with automated gear change, as well as automatic transmissions. Semi-truck transmissions can have as few as 9 forward speeds or as many as 18 forward speeds, plus 2 reverse speeds. A large number of transmission ratios means the driver can operate the engine more efficiently. Modern on-highway diesel engines are designed to provide maximum torque in a narrower PM range, 
usually 1200 to 1500 RPMs. Having more gear ratios means the driver can hold the engine in its optimum range regardless of road speed, drive axle ratio is also a critical factor. A 10-speed manual transmission, for example is controlled by a 6-slot H-box pattern, similar to that in 5-speed cars, 5 forward and 1 reverse gear. Gears 6 to 10, and high-speed reverse, are accessed by a low high-range splitter. Gears 1 to 5 are low range. Gears 6 to 10 are high range using the same shift pattern. A Super 10 transmission, by contrast, has no range splitter. It uses alternating stick and button shifting, stick shifts 1-3-5-7-9, button shifts 2-4-6-8-10, 13, 15 and 18 speed transmission have the same basic shift pattern, but include a splitter button to access to additional ratios found in each range. Some may have 12. Another difference between semi-trucks and cars is the way the clutch is set up. On an automobile, the clutch pedal is depressed full stroke to the floor for every gear shift to ensure the gearbox is disengaged from the engine. On a semi-truck with constant mesh transmission, non-synchronized, such as by the Eaton Rod Ranger series, not only is double clutching required, but a clutch brake is required as well. The clutch brake stops the rotation of the gears, and allows the truck to be put into gear without grinding when stationary. The clutch is pressed to the floor only to allow smooth engagement of low gears when starting from a full stop. When moving, the clutch pedal is pressed only far enough to brake torque for gear changes. Lights An electrical connection is made between the tractor and the trailer through a cable often referred to as a pigtail. This cable is a bundle of wires in a single casing. Each wire controls one of the electrical circuits on the trailer, such as running lights, brake lights, turn signals, etc. A standard cable would break when the rig went around corners so it is coiled and retains these coils when not under tension. It is these coils that cause the cable to look like a pigtail. In most countries a trailer or semi-trailer must have minimum. Two rear lights red, two stop lights, red, two turning lights. One for right and one for left, flashing, amber. Red optional in North America, two marking lights behind if wider than certain specifications, red. Plus a group of three red lights in the middle in North America, two marking lights front if wider than the truck or wider than certain specifications, white. Amber in North America. Underride guard. This is an assembly hanging down from the bottom of the rear of the trailer. It is intended to provide some protection for cars which start to run into the rear of the trailer. This came into use in the aftermath of the accident that killed Jane Mansfield on June 29, 1967. The car she was in hit the rear of a tractor trailer. The bottom of the rear of the trailer is near head level for an adult in a car, and without the underride guard, the only protection for such an adult's head in such an accident would be the car's windshield. Driver's License A special driver's license is required to operate various commercial vehicles. Canada Regulations vary by province. A license to operate a vehicle with their brakes is required, that is, normally a Class I, II, or III commercial license with an A, or S endorsement in provinces other than Ontario. In Ontario, a Z endorsement is required to drive any vehicle using air brakes. In provinces other than Ontario, the A endorsement is for air brake operation only, and an S endorsement is for both operation and adjustment of air brakes. Anyone holding a valid Ontario driver's license, that is, excluding a motorcycle license, with a Z endorsement can legally drive any air brake equipped truck trailer combination with a registered or actual gross vehicle weight, that is, including towing and towed vehicle, up to 11 metric tons, that includes one trailer weighing no more than 4.6 tons if the license falls under the following three classes, Class E, school bus, maximum 24 passenger capacity or ambulance, F, regular bus, maximum 24 passenger capacity or ambulance, or G, car, van, or small truck. A Class B, any school bus, 
c. any urban transit vehicle or highway coach, or d. heavy trucks other than tractor trailers, license enables its holder to drive any truck trailer combination with a registered or actual gross vehicle weight, that is, including towing and towed vehicle, greater than 11 tons, that includes one trailer weighing no more than 4.6 tons. Anyone holding an Ontario Class A license, or its equivalent, can drive any truck trailer combination with a registered or actual gross vehicle weight, that is, including towing and towed vehicles, greater than 11 tons, that includes one or more trailers weighing more than 4.6 metric tons. United States Drivers of semi-trailer trucks generally require a Class A commercial driver's license to operate any combination vehicles with a combined gross vehicle weight rating, or CGVWR, in excess of 26,000 pounds, 11.8e, if the gross vehicle weight rating, GVWR, of the towed vehicle, S, is in excess of 10,000 pounds. Some states, such as North Dakota, provide exemptions for farmers, allowing non-commercial license holders to operate semis within a certain air mile radius of their reporting location. State exemptions, however, are only applicable in interstate commerce, only the stipulations of the Code of Federal Regulations CFR, may be applied in interstate commerce. Also a person under the age of 21 cannot operate a commercial vehicle outside the state where the commercial license was issued. This restriction may also be mirrored by certain states in their interstate regulations. A person must be at least 18 in order to be issued a commercial license. In addition, endorsements are necessary for certain cargo and vehicle arrangements and types. H. Hazardous materials, HAZ mat or HM, necessary if materials require HM placards, N. Tankers. The driver is acquainted with the unique handling characteristics of liquids tankers. X signifies hazardous materials and tanker endorsements, combined. T doubles and triples. The licensee may pull more than one trailer. P buses, any vehicle designed to transport 16 or more passengers, including the driver. S school buses, any school bus designed to transport 11 or more passengers, including the driver. W Tow truck. Taiwan. The road traffic security rules, ZH, Dao Lu Jiao Tong and Quan Guize, require a combination vehicle driver license, Chinese, Lian Jai Che Jiao Shi Zitsu, to drive a combination vehicle, Chinese, Lian Jai Che. These rules define a combination vehicle as a motor vehicle towing a heavy trailer, that is, a trailer with a gross weight of more than 750 kilograms, 1,653 pounds. Europe A Category C driving license is required to drive a tractor trailer. Australia Truck drivers in Australia require an endorsed license. These endorsements are gained through training and experience. The minimum age to hold an endorsed license is 18 years, and or must have held open, full, driver's license for minimum 12 months. The following are the heavy vehicle license classes in Australia. LR, light rigid, a class LR covers a rigid vehicle with a GVM, gross vehicle mass, of more than 4.5 tons but not more than 8 tons. Any towed trailer must not weigh more than 9 tons GVM. Also includes vehicles with a GVM up to 8 tons which carry more than 12 adults including the driver and vehicles in Class C. Mister, medium rigid, a Class Mister covers a rigid vehicle with two axles and a GVM of more than 8 tons. Any towed trailer must not weigh more than 9 tons GVM. Also includes vehicles in Class LR, HR, heavy rigid, a Class HR covers a rigid vehicle with three or more axles and a GVM of more than 15 tons. Any towed trailer must not weigh more than 9 tons GVM. Also includes articulated buses and vehicles in Class Mr. HC, Heavy Combination, a Class HC license covers heavy combination vehicles like a prime mover towing a semi-trailer, or rigid vehicles towing a trailer with a GVM of more than 9 tons. Also includes vehicles in Class HR, MC, Multi-Combination, 
a Class MC license covers multi-combination vehicles like road trains and B-double vehicles. Also includes vehicles in Class HC. In order to obtain an HC license the driver must have held an Mr. or HR license for at least 12 months. To upgrade to an MC license the driver must have held a HR or HC license for at least 12 months. From licenses Mr. and upward there is also a B condition which may apply to your license if you do your testing in a synchromesh or automatic transmission vehicle. To remove the B condition you must prove to the motor registry, in any jurisdiction, that you have the ability to drive a constant mesh transmission using the clutch. Constant mesh transmission refers to crash box transmissions, predominantly Road Ranger 18 speed transmission in Australia. New Zealand In New Zealand drivers of heavy vehicles require specific licenses, termed as classes. A Class 1 driver's license, also known as a car license, will allow the driving of any vehicle with gross laden weight, GLW, or gross combination weight, GCW, of 4500 kilograms or less. For other types of vehicles the classes are separately licensed as follows. Class 2 Medium rigid vehicle Any rigid vehicle with GLW less than 18,001 kg, with light trailer up to 3,500 kg or less, any combination vehicle with GCW less than 12,001 kg, any rigid vehicle of any weight with no more than two axles, or any Class 1 vehicle. Class 3, medium combination vehicle Any combination vehicle of GCW less than 25,001 kg or any Class 2 vehicle. Class 4, heavy rigid vehicle Any rigid vehicle of any weight, any combination vehicle which consists of a heavy vehicle and a light trailer, or any vehicle of Class 1 or 2, but not 3. Class 5, heavy combination vehicle Any combination vehicle of any weight, and any vehicle covered by previous classes. Class 6 feet is a motorcycle license. Further information on the New Zealand licensing system for heavy vehicles can be found at Land Transport New Zealand. Role in industry Modern day semi trailer trucks often operate as a part of a domestic or international transport infrastructure to support containerized cargo shipment. Various types of rail flatbed train cars are modified to hold the cargo trailer or container with wheels or without. This is called intermodal, or piggyback, or piggyback. The system allows the cargo to switch from the highway to railway or vice versa with relative ease by using gantry cranes. The large trailers pulled by a tractor unit come in many styles, lengths, and shapes. Some common types are, vans, reefers, flatbeds, sidelifts and tankers. These trailers may be refrigerated, heated, ventilated, or pressurized, depending on climate and cargo. Some trailers have movable wheel axles that can be adjusted by moving them on a track underneath the trailer body and securing them in place with large pins. The purpose of this is to help adjust weight distribution over the various axles, to comply with local laws. Media Television NBC ran two popular TV series about truck drivers in the 1970s featuring actor Claudia Kins in major roles. 1960s TV series Cannonball, Moving On, 1974-1976, B.J. and the Bear. 1978-1981, 1960s TV series Cannonball, Moving On, 1974-1976, B.J. and the Bear, 1978-1981, Night Rider, this American television show featured a semi-trailer truck called The Semi, operated by the Foundation for Law and Government, FLAG as a mobile support facility for Kit. Also, in two episodes Kit faced off against an armored semi called Goliath. The Transformers, tractor trailers appear in this 1980s cartoon as the Autobots leader Optimus Prime, Convoy in Japanese version, their second-in-command Ultra Magnus, and as the Stunticons leader Motor Master, who considers himself Optimus Prime's rival for the title King of the Road. Optimus Prime returned in the 2007 film, Trick My Truck. This CMT show features trucks getting tricked out, overhauled, ice road truckers, 
This History Channel show charts two months in the lives of six drivers who haul supplies to diamond mines and oil fields over frozen lakes that double as roads. 18 Wheels of Justice, Federal Agent Michael Katz, Lucky Vanis, is a crown witness for the Mafia and goes undercover, when forced into it, to fight crime. Eddie Stobart Trucks and Trailers, a UK television show showing the trucking company Eddie Stobart and its drivers. Films Duel, Steven Spielberg's 1971 film, features a Peterbilt 281 tanker truck from Australia as the villain. Maximum Overdrive, Stephen King's 1986 film, featured big rigs as its primary homicidal villains. Smokey and the Bandit, many trucks are seen on the side of Bandit. Convoy, a 1978 film directed by Sam Peckinpah, starring Chris Christopherson. Black Dog, a 1998 film directed by Kevin Hooks, starring Patrick Swayze, Joyride, a 2001 film directed by John Dahl, starring Paul Walker and Steve Zahn. Music Convoy, a pop song by C.W. McCall spurred sales of CB radios, with an imaginary trucking story. The 18-wheeled truck was immortalized in numerous country music songs such as many songs by Red Sovine, such as Giddy Up Go, Teddy Bear, and Phantom 309, and Dave Dudley's Six Days on the Road. The thrash metal band, Big Rig, was named after these trucks. Country's song 18 Wheels and a Dozen Roses made popular in 1987 by singer-songwriter Kathy Mattia. Roll On by Alabama tells the story of a trucker who calls home to his family every night while out on the road. Papa Loved Mama by Garth Brooks is about a trucker and his wife. Truck Driving Song by Weird Al Yankovic tells the story of a female trucker, sung by a male with a deep voice. Video Games 18 Wheels of Steel Series, Big Rigs, Over the Road Racing, 2003, Euro Truck Simulator, Hard Truck, 1998, Motor Storm, Motor Storm, Pacific Rift, Rig and Roll, 2009, Rigs 